If you're a gamer that likes to live stream or create content, you probably realize how important it is to have a good capture card for recording and streaming your gameplay. So to jump into this comparison, we're gonna keep things focused on how these devices perform on consoles, such as the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. So the first question you really need to ask yourself is, do you even really need a capture card? Both the PlayStation and the Xbox have built-in recording and streaming features. Literally at the click of a few buttons, you can be creating high quality content completely for free. The PlayStation 5 in particular has a built-in video editor and you can bring in all the clips that you've created off of your console right into this editor to be cut together and then upload it to YouTube. Now you wouldn't be watching a video about capture cards if these built-in console features were perfect. So you should know that running this type of setup comes with a lack of streaming customization options such as graphic overlays, pop-up alerts, multi-streaming. There's no way to record for an unlimited amount of time. On the Xbox, you can't even include a microphone for your commentary for your recordings. So maybe a capture card might be the way to go for you. You can have complete control of your recording quality and format. You'll also have endless custom Optimization for your streams using programs like OBS, Streamlabs Desktop, or Prism Live Studio. Those programs that I mentioned are completely free to download so that you can record and live stream your video content to places like Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook completely for free. As for some cons using a capture card setup, you're gonna be spending at least around $500 or more for a decent laptop or computer setup to run the capture card with your desired software. There's also gonna be a learning curve for setting up the capture card and configuring the software. And you're also gonna have a greater likelihood of having to deal with more technical difficulties. So now at this point, that should give you a better idea for whether or not you wanna go the console features route or the custom capture card direction. So how about we compare seven different capture cards up against each other and watch until the end so you see which one is the winner. Up first we have a generic USB HDMI capture card and this little device is going to run you between five and twenty dollars depending on the one that you get. Next we have the Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme 3 capture card and this device will run you between 140 and 170 dollars. We also have the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro and this capture card it's a bit of a beefy boy and it also comes with a remote but it'll run you $250. One device you know we couldn't leave out of this lineup is the Elgato HD60 S Plus capture card. This is a little bit of an older device, but I know it's still very popular. And right now it'll cost you about $130 to $180 max. We can't forget about the S Plus's predecessor, the Elgato HD60 X capture card. This device is still relatively new, but you should be able to find it between $170 to $200. Up next in this lineup, we have the Evga XR one Pro capture card. It's so shiny. The price of this device stretches kind of far, but you should be able to find it between $160 to $220 max. And we have one more capture card to include in this lineup. It kind of looks like a spaceship, but this is the Kuami 4K capture card. Price is pretty good actually, between $110 to $150 max. If you have a monitor or display that supports 4K 60, 2K 120, or 1080p 240 hertz, you'll be able to play your games in that resolution with the Evermedia, the Elgato HD60X, the Kuami, or the Evga capture cards. For the generic USB capture card, the Cloner Alliance, the Elgato HD60S Plus, you'll be able to play your games up to a 60 hertz refresh rate. What about passing 4K 120? Well, there aren't any capture cards currently that can do that. We're just not there yet, guys. As for capture resolutions, it's a bit more straightforward as all these capture cards can record in 4K 30 or 1080p 60 as long as you're passing through that quality or higher. One amazing thing about all of these capture cards is that they all have UVC support, which essentially means that they're going to be plug and play in your Mac, Windows, or Linux computer without having to download any specific drivers or software to get them to work. For capture cards like the Elgato HE60X or the S Plus, Elgato actually has their own software that you can download for recording your gameplay. But there's a little caveat to this and it mainly affects Mac OS users. On the Elgato downloads page, you'll find that the S Plus capture card can be used with the original game capture software on Mac, but that only applies to Intel chips, not silicon M1 M2 chips. If we check out what we can use for the 
HD60X, we'll see that there's no Elgato software or 4K utility tool that we can use on any of the Macs. You'll have to use OBS or the QuickTime applications. And this is a big problem for those of you guys that use the Elgato chat link cable. You won't have any software to access to be able to change from HDMI audio to analog audio, meaning you won't be able to pull all of your audio from your controllers or Nintendo Switch. Now that's not gonna be the case with the Evga XR1 Pro or the Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme 3 capture cards. As soon as you plug a cable like the Elgato chat link into one of these line-in connections, the audio will automatically switch to that input instead of over HDMI for your audio capture. The Evga XR1 Pro even gives you further control of that line-in audio by being able to control the volume using the knob on the top of the capture card. The Cloner Alliance capture card also comes with this port with the addition of a line out and a microphone input. But we can't bring up this capture card without showing its remote control features. With this remote, you can adjust the recording settings, the starting and stopping of a recording, playing back a recording. You can also record all of your gameplay directly to a USB drive, though I would have preferred an SD card instead, but this is still a really unique feature. Now switching over to the Kiwami capture card, it looks like it offers that line in input, but it's actually just a line out port and a microphone input. So the chat link won't work with this device, but something that makes up for it is the fact that it can bypass HDCP on the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. This was crazy when I was testing this, but I could disable this and then jump in the application such as YouTube, Netflix, even hook up my cable box, Fire Stick, pretty unreal, and this capture card is a lot less annoying to deal with than the others. That also applies to the generic USB HDMI capture card, but the thing is with this device, you are gonna need to pick up an HDMI splitter that allows one input in and then two HDMIs out so that you can record to this device, but also draw it to your television or your display. I have a USB powered splitter from Techhole that I use. I can pass up the 4K60 using this device and it's been very reliable. I really don't recommend you guys using a device like this without the splitter because you're going to be playing your game right off the preview and you really 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 don't want to do that there's a natural delay that occurs whenever your video signal is passing through the capture card to your computer most of the new capture cards today fall between about 30 to 60 milliseconds of input latency the he60x capture card highly excels at this as it has probably one of the lowest input latencies out there to get it as real time as possible to the preview but it's still not zero so play off your display and not the preview now one thing we just couldn't leave out in this video was a video picture quality comparison for this test we're going to be using the same recording settings across all of the capture cards without any filters effects or any sort of added changes to the image matching up the capture cards in this lineup against the popular elgato hd60x we can see that the image qualities match up pretty well with one another there were some slight differences that i did notice especially with the HE60X and EBGA capture cards where the video picture was a tad bit darker than the others. This isn't anything major that can't be improved with applying some filters within OBS. With the generic USB capture card, it was on the other end of the spectrum with a much brighter and contrasted image than the other capture cards. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have a preference for which capture card image you think looks the best. So now, drum roll please, we need to give out our first, second, third place medals for this ultimate capture card showdown. Coming in at seventh place, we have the Elgato HD60S Plus. And this might come as a surprise for some of you guys, but the features that this capture card offers in today's market are just too expensive. With it only being able to pass a 60 Hertz refresh rate, you might as well pay a little bit more and get the Elgato HD60X and you'll be able to pass through 120 Hertz and a variable refresh rate. For sixth place, we're giving it to the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro. You can use this device without a computer to record your gameplay and it comes with the remote control for easy use. But the reason it comes in so low on this list is because of how expensive the device is for the features that it offers. You should be able to pass over a 60 hertz refresh rate, but that's not the case. I feel like this is also the perfect kind of device to record your cable box, but that won't be possible without the use of an HDMI splitter to strip the HDCP away. Coming in at fifth place, we have the generic HDMI USB capture card. This device is so cheap and affordable for what you get. 
It works with USB 2.0, which makes it super compatible with a variety of different ports you might use. If you're someone out there that's looking at picking up the Elgato Camlink, this is the perfect alternative as it's so affordable and literally does the exact same thing. But some things that aren't so great here is that you will need a one in two out HDMI splitter so that you can record your gameplay and also see it on your TV or monitor. There's no line in audio option. You can only pass up to a 60 Hertz refresh rate and you can't record in 4K. Coming in at fourth place, we have the Kuami 4K capture card. This thing is great for the price, especially since it can pass 120 Hertz. The main drawback to this device is that it doesn't have a line in audio option for the chat link users. Now it's time to give out our third place medal and that's going to the Elgato HD 60x capture card. You not only get to pass over 120 hertz refresh rate, but you can also pass a variable refresh rate for those of you guys that have those kind of monitors or TVs. If you're on Windows, you can use the 4K utility tool, but on Mac, you're kind of out of luck. You don't have any sort of Elgato software that you can leverage, but still overall, this is an outstanding capture card to use. For the silver medal, we gotta give it to the Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme 3 capture card. The feature that surpasses the HD60X is the fact that no matter which operating system you're using, if you plug in a chat link cable into the line-in analog audio port, it'll automatically switch without the need for software. This capture card has a great form factor and you can use the ReCentral software that Avermedia offers on Mac and Windows computers, which you'll need, by the way, if you wanna record in 2K and 4K K quality. This is the only capture card that supports 4K that if you use it with OBS, you won't be able to select 4K as a recording resolution. But that brings me to our first place winner, which is the Evga XR1 Pro capture card. This is a capture card that you can pick up for a fair price with solid features. You can record your game audio over HDMI, or you can plug in the Elgato chat link cable and it'll automatically switch using the line in port on this device. And let's not forget about the physical audio audio controls in addition to how cool this device looks with those LED lights on the top. I mean, just look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Let me know what you guys think of the results in the comment section below. Is there a particular capture card that you're using that I didn't mention in this video? Remember, even without a capture card, you guys still have the ability to record content and stream. Don't forget about those built-in console features that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. I still use those myself today. Not so much the streaming stuff, but the recording aspects as you can get highlight moment gameplay clips at the single click of a button. It's so convenient. So whether or not you have a capture card or you don't, it's kind of fun, honestly, to use a combination of both. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new on here. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.